This talk is sponsored by the Center for Natural Living. All right, uh, for the next act, voice and exit, we're going to have Catherine exit a baby <laughs> outside. So, everybody, we're going to push together. So, Is this on? Yes. Okay, and excuse me if I need to sit down. We brought out a chair just in case. It's kind of late and I'm kind of pregnant, so, you know. Sometimes I want to sit. So anyway, hi, my name is Catherine Blush. My name is John Blush. And we are from the Blush Family Farm in Southeast Travis County. We have a 17-month-old daughter named Aliana, and another on the way, as you can see. We have a puppy back at home named Murray Rothbark. We have over, <laughs> right? we have over 60 chickens, some peafowl, and uh, a whole lot of vegetables going on in our garden back at home. Now, unfortunately, we currently live in a society where children are taught to obey arbitrary authority. They are taught this at school. They are taught this in the home. They are taught this out in society when they interact with government and law enforcement. In particular, they are taught to turn to centralized institutions for health care, for food, and for problem solving. And when children are taught this growing up, it's no wonder that we live in a society where it seems like just about every aspect of our life is controlled through coercive hierarchical institutions and through fear, coercion, and violence. Now, John and I didn't see the correlation between what happens at home and what happens on the big picture out in society until we decided to start a family of our own. And it's our goal to make sure that our children leave the home as free, sovereign, and free-thinking individuals. In order to do this, we knew that we needed to change our lives drastically. We needed to change our behavior, and we needed to lead by example for our children so that they could grow up as free, sovereign individuals. And many in the room, I can see, were alongside us when we spent countless years fighting and fighting against a system trying to change the world. This fight that we were engaged in, it left us exhausted, it left us impoverished, and it left us physically depleted and rather unhealthy. And despite these sacrifices that we thought we were making for the greater good, we didn't feel any more free. And society wasn't getting any better. Things were just getting worse. There was more chaos, more despotism, and more misery, war all across the globe. It was about this time when we were making these realizations that I decided that I wanted Catherine to be the mother of my child. And uh, we knew that we needed to start getting healthy in order to raise a happy, healthy family. Now, we had taken notice of friends and family who were changing their lives and who were curing ailments such as diabetes through nutrition and through lifestyle changes. And we realized that this was missing from our journey and our path toward finding freedom. We were not taking care of ourselves. And how could we be free if we were unhealthy and sick, miserable, tired all the time? It's our belief that true freedom is more than just being free from coercive government. It's being free from chronic disease and free from the dependency on the pharmaceutical industrial complex. And we wanted this freedom for our daughter and now for both of our children. So we began making changes in our lives that would um, reflect this for our children and for each other. I cut fast food out, which wasn't easy. I stopped drinking sodas. I started eating only organic food. I had a terrible lung infection once. I cleared it up on my own with a nebulizer and colloidal silver. Also, I had a terrible tooth infection. I learned how to make my own tooth pack that was uh, bentonite clay, activated charcoal, xylitol and colloidal silver and I managed to clear up a tooth infection that was likely a cavity in just about a week. I personally suffered with acne for 10 years plus. I'm sure many of you remember my very broken out face. I spent thousands of dollars trying to solve this and it was our good friend Dr. Buckley and naturopath who helped me to change my diet to stop eating cow dairy and the uh, hormone casein which ended up clearing up my acne. I also got rid of my chronic back pain by cutting gluten out of my diet. Now trust me, this was really hard. I really liked <laughs> to eat wheat and I liked to eat cheese. My midwife called me a carbo fatitarian. <laughs> and they were really hard changes for me to make. I mean, literally every meal was like bread and cheese, bread and cheese, different forms. So I made these changes in my life and I cleared up these chronic problems that had been haunting me and costing me lots and lots of money. Catherine and I taking responsibility for our health was one of the most powerful things and empowering things that we'd ever done in our life. And we wanted to be sure that we imparted this ethic to our children. 
So not only did we change what we were putting into our bodies as a way to empower ourselves to find more freedom, but we began to change our ability to access high quality nutritional food. Like being dependent on centralized medical systems being dependent on centralized hierarchical food production systems leaves families vulnerable. We all know that natural disasters are common and that economies are collapsing all across the world. So it's absolutely important that we begin to grow our own food and disengage from the hierarchical centralized food production systems lest we allow our families to go hungry. So in order to begin exiting from this centralized food supply, we decided to plant our own garden, which we did shortly after we changed our diet. We planted our first garden, we got our first flock of chickens, and we learned the hard way that it is not easy to get out of these centralized food supply systems. We learned time and time again that there are lots of threats to growing your own food. Yeah, and if you're thinking that you're just going to be able to have your survival seed bank and you'll be able to throw the seeds in the backyard and, and be able to produce food, it's not that easy. We dealt with dog attacks, the dog attacks on our chickens, chickens attacking our food, drought. Of course, you probably remember the 70 plus days of 100 plus degree weather. Uh, we're having trouble finding out how to deal with the vegetables when it freezes. And uh, when we got out of town, sometimes the garden would be neglected by our roommates. But uh, it's, it's definitely a lot harder than it would seem to grow your own food, and we're just barely now getting into a groove. So it's been two years since we planted our first garden two Aprils ago, and despite the hardships, we decided we were going to continue to persevere. Now we have 10 raised bed gardens built on our property with hundreds of plants that are actively fruiting. I'm proud to say our strawberries are coming in. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> we have 63 chickens at different stages of life, and actually right now at home, we have an incubator hatching chicks. There was only one that had hatched before we left, and I'm just, ah, I'm hating that we're missing the rest of them. Hopefully they'll be eight to 10 by the time we get home. But it's well worth it to be here, people. Yes, it is, it's well worth it. <laughs> so uh, we just recently made our personal goal of becoming 50% food self-sufficient, meaning 50% of the food we consume in our daily diet, we're gonna be getting from our own farm, or we'll be trading with local farms. And in order to further that goal, we just planted 17 raised bed hugel culture mounds. Hugel culture mounds use rotting wood underneath the soil in order to retain moisture for the plant, plants in drought conditions and also to gain nutrients. We're also going to be building some aquaponic systems through the Center for Natural Living and we're going to be uh, testing their efficacy and growing fish and vegetables on our farm to help fulfill our goal of 50% food self-sufficiency. I personally am most excited about our goal to get goats this year. That will help our family provide ourselves with a non um, a non cow version of dairy. And our daughter Aliana absolutely loves goats. She runs up and hugs them and loves on them. We also plan to expand our chicken operation to 200 chickens this year, and we would like to add turkeys and uh, what was the other bird? Ducks. ducks, yes, turkeys and ducks, which we're very excited about as well. That was Paul, he helps on the farm. And if we have the capacity, we're going to try to do pigs this year as well. Mm. <laughs> She'll get used to the smell. <laughs> right now we've been teaching our daughter the joys of self-sufficiency. Every day she comes out, she helps us collect eggs. She is in the garden pulling weeds, sometimes pulling things I don't want her to pull, but it's okay, I'm directing her, you know. Mm in the right direction. She also helps to plant seeds and to transfer uh, larger plants that need to be transferred. We want our children to have the confidence and the knowledge and the tools necessary to be able to grow their food, their own food, and to never go hungry. Now imagine a world full of garden babies. Wouldn't that be amazing how many of them would want to turn to a centralized institution for food, whether that be through you know, government aid or a grocery store? Or who would want to go eat fast food when they have a huge buffet in their backyard full of delicious nutritional snacks like yummy strawberries? So we are on our way towards exiting the centralized medical industrial complex and we're on our way towards exiting the centralized food production systems. But freedom is much more than that. We also want to bring the ethos into our home that it's wrong to use violence in order to encourage people to change their behavior. Now, we were faced with an obstacle to this a few months back when our daughter Aliana started hitting me. 
it began typically when John was around. It didn't happen when he was gone. And we went to our peers to ask what was going on. What could we do? Some people recommended we swat her or spank her or hit her to teach her not to hit. We decided to remain curious. And in a few months, she was able to communicate. She was frustrated with her father being on the phone or the computer. So she would hit me to get attention from him. So uh, this was a struggle for us because we had committed to nonviolent tactics in the household and being peaceful parents and avoiding the use of violence as a means to change behavior. But still, our daughter was hitting Aliana. And uh, you know, many parents would turn to spanking in that situation. But instead, we chose communication and curiosity instead of coercion and fear. And we found that maybe it was the parents that needed to change their behavior instead of the children. When you bring violence into a home as a means of changing behavior, it teaches children to accept violence as a means of problem solving as it, on, a, on a greater picture as well, which means they'll accept it from government, which is something that we all have a problem with, right? We don't like the government using force to change societal behavior. Have you seen the drug war? Nobody's happy with that sort of behavior. Yeah, so we believe as parents we should hold ourselves to the same standard. And many people may be thinking, I was spanked as a child and I turned out just fine. But I encourage people to self-reflect. Maybe there's unintended consequences of the spanking that took place or the spanking that you're embarking upon your children. I myself was spanked as a child, and Catherine and I found that we actually had some problems in our relationship as a result of it. It took me 28 years to realize that the spanking that I received as a child may have given me a proclivity to telling the truth when I expected negative consequences. I was spanked as a child when I would come home from school after getting in trouble. Uh, the public indoctrination centers, and I would always lie to my dad about what happened. He'd say, it's, oh, it's never your fault, John. It's never your fault. Well, of course I'm going to lie. I expected violence to be inflicted upon me. Well, this ended up hurting Catherine and I in our relationship. Uh, we spent a little bit of time apart before we began our journey of uh, self-development and self-growth, and I did something during that time that maybe I shouldn't have done, but worse than that, I lied to Catherine about it. And it took a lot of self-reflection to realize that perhaps I'd been programmed my entire life to avoid telling the truth, to expect violence or negative consequences as a result. Since then, we've grown a whole lot, but I want people that think spanking does nothing wrong and they turn out just fine and it's okay to spank their children to perhaps do a little more self-reflection and maybe realize that there's unintended consequences involved that you might not have realized in the first place. So to reiterate, to reiterate what John is saying, Using violence in the home may have unintended consequences, even if you call it swatting. It's still spanking, it's still hitting, and it teaches children that violence is a method for problem solving, which is something we're trying to change in our society. The theme of this conference is using persuasion over coercion, and we encourage you to take that into your households as well. So these are a few things that Catherine and I have done in realizing that if we want to create a better world, it starts inside of our hearts. It starts by looking in the mirror and it starts in the household. We've done everything we can to take ourselves off and exit the hierarchical centralized medical industrial complex. We've done everything we can to exit the reliance on hierarchical centralized food production systems and we're doing everything in our power no matter how hard it may be to avoid using violence as a means of changing people's behavior because we're going to teach our children that there's a better way to go about organizing society and living our lives. So if you want to follow our journey, we are blogging and video blogging on SovereignLiving.tv. We have a YouTube channel as well, Sovereign Living TV. SovereignLiving.tv is a project of the Center for Natural Living, a new nonprofit we recently founded. The mission is to demonstrate the value of voluntary cooperation and natural living in the areas of sustainability, family, and health by creating educational media and helping families to fulfill their basic needs. So we hope you'll check it out, and we hope you enjoyed what we had to say today. Thank you. Thank you.